This video is about temperature and internal energy. We'll begin by looking at the basics of temperature and then discuss molecular structure and internal energy. Let's see the basics of temperature. Temperature can simply be defined as a measure of how hot or cold something is. More specifically, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in an object. So basically, whether we feel that an object is hot or cold depends on how fast the particles in the object are moving. Faster motion means higher temperature. All of us have witnessed that when two objects that have different temperatures are in contact, energy passes from the hotter to the colder object. This energy is often called heat. An important note here is that temperature is not a type of energy. If it would be, its unit would be the joule. As a result of energy transfer between the objects, they can reach the same temperature, and when this happens, we say that the objects are in thermal equilibrium. Temperature is a scalar quantity, and in physics we use two scales to measure temperature. The Celsius temperature scale, which has units of degrees Celsius, and the absolute temperature scale, which has units of Kelvin or K. In some parts of the world, the Fahrenheit is used to measure temperature, but we do not use the Fahrenheit scale in physics. It is easy to convert between the Celsius and the absolute temperature scales, because the difference of 1 degree Celsius is equal to the difference of 1 Kelvin. Here is the formula to convert between the two scales. Let's see a simple example of applying this formula. We'll convert 37 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. So Tk, the temperature in Kelvin, is equal to the temperature in Celsius, so 37, plus 273. This gives us 310 Kelvin. Let's move on to molecular structure and internal energy. You have probably seen molecular structure drawings in the past for solids, liquids, and gases. Molecules in a solid are close to each other and vibrate in fixed positions. Because of this, a solid has definite volume and definite shape. For example, you cannot easily change the volume and the shape of a metal cube. Molecules in a liquid are also close to each other, but they are free to move around. You can imagine these molecules as millions of small balls rolling around on top of each other in a cup or a box. While a liquid has a definite volume, it has no definite shape. For example, you cannot easily compress water into a smaller volume, but you can easily change its shape by pouring it into different containers. In a gas, molecules are far apart and they move around freely. Because of this, a gas has no definite volume and no definite shape. It is easy to compress gases, and they can be stored in containers of different shapes. The internal energy of a substance is closely related to its molecular structure. Internal energy is defined as the sum of the potential energy and the random kinetic energy of the particles in the substance. Potential energy depends on the arrangement of and distance between the particles in a substance. As the distance between the particles increases, the potential energy of the substance also increases. Kinetic energy depends on the motion of the particles in the substance. The greater speed particles have, the larger their kinetic energy will be. As we mentioned before when we define temperature, Greater kinetic energy also means higher temperature. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. We began by defining temperature as a measure of how hot or cold something is, and we added that more specifically this means that it is the measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in an object. We discussed that when two objects that are at different temperatures come in contact, there is energy transfer between the objects, and that this energy, which is often called heat, passes from hotter to colder objects. When the objects reach the same temperature, they are said to be in thermal equilibrium. 
We mentioned that temperature is a scalar, and that in physics there are two different scales that are used to measure temperature. These are the Celsius scale and the absolute scale. Their respective units are degrees Celsius and Kelvin. Here is the equation to convert between the two scales. You can find this equation in the IB Physics data booklet. After wrapping up temperature, we moved on to the molecular structure of matter. We discussed solids, liquids, and gases. Then we defined internal energy of a substance as the sum of the potential energy and the random kinetic energy of the particles in the substance. We added that potential energy depends on the arrangement of and distance between the particles in substance, and that as distance between the particles increases, the potential energy of the substance also increases. Finally, we said that kinetic energy depends on the motion of the particles in a substance, and that if the particles have a greater speed, it means that they will also have a greater kinetic energy and a higher temperature. This completes our discussion about temperature and internal energy. In the next video, we will learn about specific heat capacity and specific latent heat.